Hey guys, William Justice here. In my last video, I created a 3D sphere and added some animations to it. And I got quite a few questions on how I did the tracking and the masking so that it looked like my fingers fit on top of the ball. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the tracking and how I did some of the masking so that we can hold it like that. So this is with the masking. And when I take the masking off, the ball is sitting on top of my hand, which we don't want. If you enjoy my videos and you like DaVinci Resolve, make sure that you like and subscribe. Um, I, really appreciate everyone, I really appreciate everyone's support. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know and I'll be glad to answer them. Okay, let's create this animation. Um, I have a video clip here of, I'm holding a basketball, and that was actually good to use for reference as to where to position the, the sphere. We're gonna do uh, some tracking of where the ball is and some masking where my hand is, add a few little effects. And then we're gonna create the, uh, the ball effect with the disco ball and the lights and all that. That's pretty simple to do. I've created a fusion settings file for the disco ball. You can download it from my website or you can click the link in the description. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this clip and say new fusion clip and let's get into fusion. I'm gonna paste in some code. This is the, um, the 3D sphere. This is the, uh, the 3D nodes for it. I have a link in to, uh, the description to the last video I did where I talked about how I set this up. So let's take the output of the 3D render and we're gonna put it right into the media one and merge it on top. So there we go, we have a blank sphere um, right on top of the, of the clip. So the next thing we need to do is we need to track the position of the basketball and use that tracking position to move the sphere so it moves kind of in relation to where the basketball is. So with media in one selected, hit control space and we're gonna type in planar tracker and add that. So hit two on planar tracker because we don't need that 3D sphere yet until we have the tracking done. So let's move this around just a touch and we're gonna go to the first frame. So for this one, I did quite a few different ways of tracking it. Um, so again, we're on the planar tracker. You can track the whole ball or just some of the stuff, but I, the last time I did, I tracked my fingers here and that seemed to do a good enough job. In the tracker, um, for the motion type, select translation. We don't need to do rotation, um, scale, or any or perspective. That's gonna warp our ball. So we're just gonna do translation. Make sure you're on the first frame and then hit track forward, which is the last button over here. And you can see the, the tracking position moves along with my fingers. Now, to attach that tracker to the ball, let's go ahead and click on Merge 2. So we got the, uh, the sphere right there. With the planar tracker selected, hit Create Planar Transform. This planar transform has all the movement data that goes along with the ball. So we're gonna take the planar transform and slide it right in between the 3D render and the Merge 1. And you'll see that the 3D sphere is moving right along with the basketball. Now the movement's not perfect, so we're gonna have to make a few adjustments, but it's not too difficult. This gives us a good starting point. Right after the planar transform, we're gonna add a transform node. So click the transform option in the bar up there. And we're gonna adjust this ball. Let's first move the size down. And we're gonna move it over pretty close to where the basketball is. We use the basketball for reference. So let's uh, move it right on top of that. Make it a little bit bigger. That's pretty close. Move it up a touch. You can kind of see where when it's just covering, it's kind of where you want to be. And you can hit control and slide the X and Y to do a little bit finer movements. Um, let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, you'll notice that the basketball kind of slides around, so the tracking wasn't perfect, but it's pretty close. Okay, so to fix this, we just need to adjust the center position and the size a little bit as the ball moves. Uh, most of the movement's there, we just need to make a, fine, a few fine adjustments. So let's go to the first frame. We're gonna keyframe the position and size and just make a few adjustments. So let's, uh, if you hit control and move the sphere, and we're doing this on the transform node, you get a finer adjustment. So all we're gonna do is every about 10 or 15 frames, we're just gonna adjust the sphere and move it right back on top of that basketball. Go again, move down. Doesn't have to be perfect, but pretty close is good. Okay, so now let's see what we have now. That's off a little bit. So all you gotta do is just in between the ones, the uh, keyframes, click in between these two, kind of click in the middle here and you can see it's off a little bit. So we just make a few more adjustments and we're just gonna go in between each of these keyframes and see if it's off. In between those two, kind of split the difference. The ball is sitting on top of my hands. It's sitting on top of my hand when I put it here and it's also sitting on top of my fingers right there. So we'll, we'll see when we take it away, my fingers are underneath there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the magic mask and mask out where my fingers are here and where my hand is to put them on top of the ball. So let's add a magic mask node. So click in the node area, hit control space and search for magic mask. Take the media in and put it into the input of the magic mask and hit two on magic mask. All right, so this is gonna let us see where we're at. Using the, using the magic mask is really easy. 
we're going to start with um, my hand right here. So you can just draw a little line on it and the magic mask tries to figure out where your hand is. You can see there it didn't quite get everything. So what I did for this one is I just kind of went up and down where the fingers are just real rough like this and drew it back like that and that seemed to get my hand. So you can see my hands there. Now if there's any parts that aren't right, you can make, make some adjustments. You, you can go to the add mode to add things in. We're gonna hit this subtract right here and we're just gonna put a little line on that and that's gonna tell the magic mask that we don't want that in there. We take a look at there. We got a little piece right here. I'm gonna drag that out, so that was too much. So we're gonna add it back right there. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then you can adjust the mat here um, by the road dilate, so you can kind of bring it in by dilating a little bit, and that'll take some of the edges off, and then you can blur it back a little bit to kind of smooth it out. And that's pretty good. So we're in the last frame here where my hand is, so we're gonna just track it backwards. So go, let's go back to tracking and hit track backwards. So let's uh, take this output of the magic mask. Let's take a look at what we have here. So the magic mask basically is my hand and arm. So we're gonna take that and we're just gonna drag the output of the magic mask right on top of the merge one. And that should merge it right on top of the sphere. And there we go, we have my hand sitting on the sphere. It looks like there's a little bit of cleanup we can do, but it's not too bad. Okay, to help make it a little more realistic, I wanted to have a shadow where my fingers were. Um, so we're gonna hit the magic mask hit control space and type in shadow and find the shadow and add that in. Add a little bit of the softness and then you can see we have the shadow around there. And because the light's coming from the top left, we're gonna move the shadow offset a little bit to the left and a little bit down. Now that's really, really harsh right now. So we're gonna soften it up and then we're going to bring the alpha down. Now this is, you can adjust this however you need, but the shadow kind of helps separate the hand from the object just a bit. Now you notice because the mask masked out my whole arm, the actual shadow is going down my arm. Let me turn that off. If you look down here, you'll see the shadow is there, um, which it looks kind of weird. So all we need to do is take the output of this transform one, which is the sphere, and bring that into the mask input of the shadow. And you see it's only going to have the shadow where the ball is. So we're masking out everything except where the ball is. The next one I did was my hand down below. So we're gonna do the same thing on that one. I'll do this one real quick. We're gonna add another magic mask. Take the output of media in one into the magic mask. And you draw the line kind of where the fingers are. And it finds it. We're not in the, the beginning frame. So this one we need to track forwards and backwards. So we're gonna hit the track forwards and backwards button. And this is uh, creating a mask everywhere my hand is for each frame. It's kind of computing it and finding the hand. All right, now that we have that tracked, we just need to take the output of the magic mask and put it and merge it in right on top of everything again. And now when we look at the ball, you can see that my fingers are on top where the ball is. Um, that's the basic tracking and masking. So we have the ball moving along with where my hand was, Took a few, uh, so you can see that there's a few minor adjustments we need to do, but it, it's pretty close. The ball position gets off just a little bit there. And that's where you would go into the transform and make a, just a few adjustments as needed. Okay, so let's let's turn this into the disco ball. That was kind of a fun effect. It's really easy to do. We're gonna start with a fast noise. We're gonna put this in viewer one, and we're gonna add, crank up the detail and the contrast color. We're gonna go ahead and make it uh, black. I'm gonna bring the alpha up so it's gonna be black and white noise, we can adjust the scale. After that, we're going to hit uh, control space and type in mosaic blur. And we'll put that in viewer one. And this is where you can adjust the pixel frequency. And these are going to be the, these are going to be each of the sections of the disco ball. So we, oh, we take the output of the mosaic blur and we put it right into the green material input of the shape. And there we have our basic ball. Let's do a, uh, we're gonna add a transform. And for the transform, we can uh, shrink the size down, make some adjustments. And we're gonna set it to um, wrap. So we, we can use the transform to adjust the rotation of the ball. How do, how do we make it colored? The co making it colored is pretty easy. We're going to bring this back here and we're going to add a merge node right there. And then we're gonna take a background node and put it right on top of the merge. And let's just, just real quick, you can see that let's, we'll set it to like a, it's a green for now. In the merge node, we set the apply mode to overlay. And you can see we have all the, the green squares. On the fast noise, we can bump up the seethe rate. Let's make it a little bit faster. So we have our pattern and we have the pattern on the ball. Now we're just gonna um, animate the pattern. So let's go to the frame one. We'll reset the center position. We'll hit, uh, we'll keyframe it. 
Well, we'll go over 35 frames or so and change the center position. You could move, really move this in whatever way you wanted. Go to the spline editor, select displacement, and we're just gonna have this displacement repeat. So if you, if you ever have an animation that you want to repeat, you go into the spline editor, select what you want, select both points, and then you hit this set relative button right here. And that's just gonna have it, you'll see the line just keeps on going. It's just gonna, that, that animation is just gonna keep repeating. So now we have the ball spinning. And then you can see that the lines here are a little bit off, so we could, we could adjust the pattern and make it a little better. You'll see that it's 19.1, so we could make it like 20, something that's an even number. And you'll see that it fits now where all these squares are the same. The pattern fits in there, so it's not gonna have that repeating thing. Okay, to get the colors, we go into the background. We're gonna, use, we're gonna create a gradient. The type, we're gonna set it to gradient. And we're just gonna put each of the colors we want on this gradient. To add colors to the gradient, you click one of these little arrows. And we're just gonna go down the color spectrum here. So we'll set the first one to red. Click a little bit in there. See, we created a new triangle. We'll click that. And we'll set this one to kind of the, the pink. Let's add a new one, just clicking in the bar. This one's gonna be more of a blue. Click in the bar again. A little bit lighter blue. Clicking in the bar. Moving into the greens. Let's darken that up just a touch. And right in here, gonna be more into the yellowy, yellowy orange area. Wind it on uh, kind of a yellow. And then the last one, we're gonna set it to the orange. So we got kind of all the colors in the spectrum. You could really, you really use whatever colors you wanted here. With the spinning sections, track into my hand. The last thing I wanted to do was add the lines in here. Now I started out by trying to use the grid node, but it's kind of um, difficult to get it to line up the way you want. So what I did was, um, let's take a look at our pattern here. Let's put this in uh, viewer one and the output, let's put the output in viewer two. Okay, so we're gonna create lines between there, between each of the squares. To do this, I just used some shape nodes. So we're gonna hit, uh, we're gonna start with a rectangle, hit control space and type in S rect. And we, we're gonna need a, a render node for the rectangle. The rectangle. So we're gonna hit control space and type in S render. So the render node creates all your shapes, and then we're just gonna put these over here, right on top of the background. Take the output of the render, put it right into the merge, and let's take a look at what we have here. So there's our rectangle right on top of our background. So let's just adjust the size of the rectangle. We're gonna make it really thin, like that, and tall. Gonna take the rectangle and we're gonna move it to the very beginning here. The, on the, well, the, we're gonna move it to the left-hand side. So put it right there on the left. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Right like that, make it a little thinner. Now with the rectangle selected, hit Control Space and type in S Duplicate. And this is good. we're gonna take this line and make copies of it all the way across for our vertical lines. And let's say we want uh, 20 copies or so, depending on how many squares you have. And then to get the copies to line up, all you gotta do is change the X offset. So we're gonna slide it over, and you get that first line right on top of there. That's pretty close. I want the first rectangle to just come back a little bit. Okay, we're gonna add in the horizontal line with another S rectangle, shape rectangle right here. Hit uh, Control Space and type in S rect. Add that in, and we're going to take it and merge it in right after the duplicate node right there. And there's a rectangle, so we just need to make this the, the uh, let's see, we're gonna go to the first rectangle, and we have the width right there, so we're gonna copy the width, and go to the shape, shape rectangle, the horizontal one, and we're gonna make that the height. And the width is gonna be the full screen. Okay, so we just need to take this and move it right up to the top. And right after the S rect two, we're gonna hit control space and type in S duplicate. That's gonna get our duplicate node. And we'll see, we'll do like, uh, say 15 copies. We just need to adjust the Y offset in the inspector to get them to line up. And now we have the lines on the ball. And that's pretty much all there is for the effect. It is going a little bit too fast, so I would probably slow it down a bit. It's, it's kind of flying there. But hopefully you get the idea and kind of see how this was made. Um, if you have any comments, questions, let me know. Um, be glad to hear from you. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about some masking and some tracking for 3D, this 3D object. It's pretty simple. Um, 
I encourage you to get in there, try it out, and see how it works um, for yourself. Once you do it, it gets a lot easier. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to everybody soon.